All right, this is free calculus A, uh, unit two, lesson three, composition of functions. I mentioned earlier that uh, when you write multiplication, you want you want to use a dot, not a circle. Some people like to make their dots and stylize dots by making them circles, but a circle means something different. Different. So you would, would, rather than f dot, uh, or I'm sorry, let's say, yeah, f f dot g of x, right? That would mean f of x times g of x. Okay, we're going to explore something called f circle g of x. It's defined as f of g of x. Now, as you can see, g of x is inserted in as the argument in your f of x function, right? Uh, I've got a picture here of uh, Russian dolls or Ukrainian dolls. They, these are nested dolls. Each one fits inside the other. And that's kind of the idea. We're taking one function and inserting it inside another function, okay? And in that way, we can create a brand new function. Uh, so let's, let me give you an example here. Um, let's say, let's say, okay. Let's say I have a function. I've got a function here, a function that says, uh, that says the, the number of Fahrenheit degrees is nine fifths the number of number of Celsius degrees plus 32. This is an actual formula from science, right? If, if it's zero degrees centigrade or Celsius, it is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And if, if you plug in 100 degrees Celsius, 100 divided by five is 20, and, or one, yeah, 20, and 20 times nine is 180. 180 plus 32 is 212. And you'll note that 100 degrees Celsius corresponds with 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a formula that given Celsius, and I want to emphasize this, given Celsius produces Fahrenheit, okay? The given, the input is Celsius, the output is Fahrenheit. In ordered pairs, C, Celsius is the X value, and F, or Fahrenheit, is the Y value, okay? And you can recognize that as a linear function. Now here's another formula that says that the number of degrees Kelvin number of degrees Kelvin is the number of degrees Celsius plus 273.15. And that's because in Kelvin, Kelvin is called the absolute, absolute scale, absolute temperature scale, because zero degrees Kelvin corresponds to with a state of matter in which the matter has zero energy. And that is, my understanding is, an impossible state to reach because matter would cease to exist. It would, it would collapse in on itself. Okay, because all motion would cease completely. Uh, but there are some fascinating things that occur as you get close to absolute zero, such as superconductivity, which is an er a major area of scientific study. But 273.15, negative 273.15 degrees Celsius corresponds to zero energy. Zero energy, absolute zero. So if I give you 100 degrees Celsius, that is 100 plus 273.15 or 373.15 degrees Kelvin. Now again, this formula takes Celsius degrees, Celsius degrees, and gives you as output Kelvin. Now let's say I want to do this. Let's say I want to create a formula, create a formula that will do this. It, it, you'll, you'll take, you'll take, um, you'll take uh, Fahrenheit, right? Take Fahrenheit and give me, give me, uh, give me Kelvin, okay? Fahrenheit and give me Kelvin, right? Or actually, I think, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Fahrenheit and give me Kelvin. You have a quiz question that, that says take Kelvin and give you Fahrenheit. But I've got, I'm gonna take Fahrenheit, I'm gonna take Fahrenheit temperature and give you Kelvin, all right? So here's the way we do that. We break it into steps. I'm gonna turn Fahrenheit into Celsius, which I'm then going to turn into Kelvin. Now remember this reverse order thing that goes on, right? To change Celsius to Fahrenheit, I need a formula for F based on C, okay? So to change 
f into c, right, to f into c, I need a formula for f based on c. All right, so there we got it, right? I'm sorry, to change f to change f into c, right, to put input f and get out c, I need a formula for c based on f. So let's do that here. Let's do a little algebra here. I'm going to rearrange here. Now think in terms of solving, finding inverses. I'm going to do the opposite operation in reverse order, right? So I'm going to, instead of nine taking c multiplying by 9 dividing by 5 and adding 32 I'm going to do the reverse in the opposite direction I'm going to subtract 32 so I'm going to take Fahrenheit minus 32 then I'm going to multiply by 5 and divide by 9 okay so Celsius is 5 ninths Fahrenheit minus 32 okay and that's going to change that's going to take Fahrenheit that's going to take Fahrenheit and give me Celsius so that's the first step right here. Fahrenheit, give me Celsius. Now, once I have Celsius, I need a formula to turn Celsius into Kelvin, right? So I need a formula for Kelvin based on Celsius. And there I have it right here, right? Okay, so there's that step. So first, I'm going to change Fahrenheit into Celsius. So I'm going to take Fahrenheit and change it to Celsius. And then I'm going to put that in the formula for a Kelvin. So basically, here's what I do. I'm, I'm thinking of the Russian doll. We work backwards. We start with the Kelvin formula. Kelvin equals Celsius equals Celsius plus 273.15. Okay. And so now I'm going to insert my formula. So take Celsius and, and turn it into Kelvin. I'm going to take a formula that takes Fahrenheit and turns it into Celsius, 5 ninths, Fahrenheit minus 32. Okay, and so this formula will convert, will convert uh, uh, Fahrenheit temperature into Kelvin. So just to verify here, uh, if I were to insert 212, 212 degrees minus 32, times 5 ninths, okay, plus 273.15. 212 minus 32 is going to be 180, times 5 ninths, plus 273, 273.15. 180 divided by 9 is 20, 20 times 5 is 100, 100 plus 273.15. And 373.15 degrees Kelvin. And that does match scientific uh, reality. Water boils at 100 degrees centigrade, which is 373.15 degrees Kelvin. Okay, so the, the Fahrenheit to Celsius was inserted in the Celsius to Kelvin to create a new formula for Kelvin based on Fahrenheit. K of F, right, is what we would call it. K, a formula of F, right? So that's that's composition. And hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Feel free to book a live lesson and, and get any help you want. And you have a wonderful day.